Welcome back to my channel. My name is Shamika and this is Check the Rhymes. I'm super excited that you're here. You already know the drill. Subscribe, comment, like, share, and tap the bell icon in case you want to be notified whenever I upload a video. And of course, you can always check me out at my media partner, Sweet929.tv. And I wish you guys could see my t-shirt today because I am rocking a Soul Train t-shirt. And if you know me, you already know that that's how I got my career off the ground as far as my writing. I wrote for SoulTrain.com for five years. So this interview today is full circle for me. So um, today joining me, I have nine time Grammy nominated R&B singer Kelly Price. She plays Breanne Clark on BET's hit series, American Soul. You don't wanna miss it. So I'm gonna to talk to Kelly a little bit about what we can expect for her character coming up on this season. And we're gonna get into how it's a full circle moment for her as well. You don't wanna miss this, stay tuned. Hi Kelly, how are you? I'm good, welcome to Check the Rhymes. This is like, I think the third time I've interviewed you. <laughs> I interviewed you, um, I last saw you at Black, Black Music Honors um, back in sep September, and then before that, on the carpet of um, Steve Harvey Neighborhood Awards. I saw that picture. <laughs> wow. When I yeah. first moved back to Atlanta, I think that yeah. was 2015. Yeah. Yeah. We got history. Great. Yeah. <laughs> we family right now. <laughs> yeah. But what, what, we all are. That's right? how we survive. Exactly. But what I wanted, but the, but the 2015 thing, what's so amazing is when I interviewed you on the carpet for then, it was for soultrain.com. Can you believe that? <laughs> yeah, like I, I kind of noticed like all, all of these little things that uh, it's like the whole, the world is like a big tapestry and all of like from behind, it just looks like all of this crazy yarn, but in front, it's a picture. It is. It, it is. It's like it's like Don Cornelius kind of still is like weaving the pieces together, even though he's not here. So <laughs> insane. So, insane. Yeah. Every now and then we just I just have a moment and I stop and I'm like, wow, like there, there really is a plan here. Even even and we think it's ours. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I'm well, I'm like loving American Soul and like I I binged it over the weekend and like I was like I'm ready for season two and then I'm like oh wait season two is coming soon so I gotta know for this season what is gonna happen with the Clark family? The Clark family is in a completely different state of existence at this point. As you know, Brienne lost her husband. Uh, uh, he was in the war and she lost him to the Vietnam War. And at that time, she had teenage kids moving into adulthood. So what's happening with the, the, the Clark family is I feel like they're in a bit of disarray, um, my take on it. And when I say disarray, they're kind of displaced. They're in different places, some physically, um, definitely not on the same wavelength in terms of what she thinks her kids can or should be doing with their lives, but understanding that they are grown and it's time for her to figure out who she is. And so in season two, the, we're three years later, you get a chance to see that Brienne has decided to embrace having a life that is for Brienne. And so she's singing a lot more. Um, she has a regular singing gig. I think I'm allowed to say that. I, I think I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> I, I said it. Um, so you get a chance to see her. She's still mom. And she's still okay. that figure, but she's learning the balance of letting her adult children um, live their lives and make their own choices so that she can also do the same. Because prior to now, really every decision that she had made was about be having a husband, about being a mother, about being a wife, about the financial needs of the family, about the times, about the culture, about uh, all of these responsibilities. And she still is this responsible person, but for the very first time, she's adulting as well. Yeah, so not yeah. Not being somebody's mommy, somebody's wife. So you get to see the evolution of Brienne and, and the new direction 
of the relationship and some of the old direction of the relationship that was there before between her and the kids um, with them being like legally adult now. Okay. Cause I know I kept looking at the TV, like, when is she going to snatch them up from the, <laughs> <their Yeah. mouth? laughs> Listen, the funniest thing ever is to watch so, social media. Like whose mother are you? My mother would have had me. Am, am I the only one that had a mother whose teeth would have had her, my teeth would have been on the floor? Right. <laughs> I said, y'all notice that I am, I, I just need y'all to know, I am not my mama on this show. <laughs> Any mama in the project in New York City that was this mama, but I guess we're not in the project in New York City, so we're going to write. Right, 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 right. Exactly, because I kept thinking, like, maybe it's coming. It's coming, you know, especially when um when she said, I hate you. I was like, okay, now she's going to knock her out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Caitlin, it's funny. Caitlin, when she was like, girl, I was waiting on them to let you choke me out because if I did that to my mother, my mother would have choked me out. I said, yeah. <laughs> they won't let me do it. They won't let me do it. You can see all that, all that other violence, but they don't want to show you beating the kids when they step by the line. It's okay. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell me, so that that's like, you, you mentioned that you'll be singing, which was actually my next question. But for, for me, like I was curious as to that journey for you from going from singing to acting. What, what has that been like? Because you still get to do both. <laughs> well, I still get, right, this is like the ultimate acting job, right? So uh, it was a very intentional journey. When, I, when we met in 2015, at some point later that year, once I got settled back in Atlanta, I made a five-year plan, and acting was on that list. I've dabbled in it. Um, I, didn't, I never went at it full-fledged. Years ago, I, I had kids. I felt like I was spending too much time away on the road as a performer. If I started acting and recording music at that time, my kids would never see me. So I dabbled with it, but I never went for it. I made this five-year plan when I moved back here, got about a year and a half in, and I realized I was behind time. That's why I stood to write things down. I was not where I was supposed to be based on this five-year plan. So I literally um, started cutting the number of gigs that I took to perform music so that I mm -hmm. could take a semester of a production class and get with an acting coach to work with an, a coach on a regular basis so that I could audition more. And literally finished a, a semester, um, and six months into working with this coach, got a call back for this job. And it, it, I was like, wow. But I did notice the, a huge difference in the, my confidence in auditioning and even the way I approach different, different characters, how to approach mm -hmm. them, because I had been doing the work. And I, it was important to me that people could see that I, I got this job because I can handle the acting part of it, not just because Brian is a, a lost soul singer somewhere trying to find right. the right back. Right, right, right. Yeah, I think you're doing an amazing job. Um, you know, we mentioned we mentioned that this is full circle kind of for both of us, but Don Cornelius played a huge part in your career. Can you talk about that? Like how how he really kind of helped you? I, I love telling this story because he was an early believer in Kelly Price as a solo artist. I had been touring with a lot of artists. Um, I, I had been writing for everybody. There wasn't a record company executive in this country that did not know who I was. I was writing for, for all their artists and doing background for all their artists. But the conversation behind closed doors was that who, we can't sell her. She's too fat. She's too loud. She's too black. Like those were the words that were being spoken about wow. how my career would never happen for those reasons. And so um, as a songwriter in a session, as a producer in a session with Puff Daddy for Ronald Isley, that's how I met him. And I had written the song. I had been, I'd sung the backgrounds on the song. And I stayed that day to, to cut his vocal because Diddy literally was like, I can't sing. I can't tell him how to sing. Like, how I sound telling me he's hitting a bad note. You got to do that. <laughs> so that's how I ended up. That's how I ended up meeting Ronald. He was like, I need you to stay. I was I had not planned on being in the session. I wrote the song. Um, but that's how I met him. And literally from that day, he stopped the session. He was like, what are you doing? I'm like, I, what are you asking me? <laughs> he was like, are you making records? Or are you are you making records? And I'm like, no, I mean, I write records. I, I travel, I, you know, whatever, but no, I'm not making records. And so long story short, he started this very intense courting process 
to get me to sign to his boutique label and, and, and pretty much forced me, begged me, whatever you want to call it, to let him do a record on me. And he would tell me all the time, if you open up your mouth and sing, you're undeniable. Like, you got to believe that people will buy your music once they hear you. And mm-hmm. one of the first meetings that were taken after the record was done was a meeting that Ronald Isley and Hiram Hicks co- coordinated with Don Cornelius. Gave him my backstory, told him exactly what they wanted to do with me. And he said, I want to be a part of the success of Kelly Price. And so we released the music with no video, went to number one with no video that had not been done ever before um, in the video age. So we made a bit of history. Um, And the very first time that the world got to see me, because we put the music out with just my logo and Mm -hmm. a CD jacket. Um, The very first time the world got to see me on a stage was on a Saturday morning on Soul Train for the very first time singing this song that they've been hearing for months. So, yeah, it was crazy to get the callback for this. So full circle for me. Yes, I love that. I love that. I love that. I could talk to you forever. But our time is up. (laughs) But I'm super excited to to check out season two on BET, American Soul, 10 o'clock. So thank you, Kelly. And of course, we got to sign off with... We got to sign up with a Don, a Don Cornelius type of saying. Oh, yes. <laughs> Always keep it with love, peace, and soul. There you go. It's going to be a stone gas, honey. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. 